how to stop heat. And we talked before about the first law of thermodynamics, uh, which is uh, heat is energy, energy is work, and work is heat. These things are all interchangeable. And we have also thought about energy use in houses. So where does an energy, where does a house use energy? Uh, where does a house lose energy? And where does a house gain energy? Um, there are many answers to these questions, which we will look at later. Uh, first, just a reminder of heat transfer. Um, there are three ways that heat can move. And one of these is conduction. One is convection. And the other is radiation. Um, these are um, conduction is moving through a substance or material. Uh, convection is in a moving fluid and radiation is in electromagnetic waves. Um, those are the uh, Japanese words just to help you study your Japanese or to help you study English. Um, so what kind of heat transfer I asked before? Um, which kind of heat transfer is heat going across a room? Which is heat going through a wall? How about from a spaceship? What about in a kettle? Uh, how about in your clothes? Um, how about from a um, fire? And from a flat roof on a cloudless night? Uh, so let's just put these all in the right place. Let's put conduction up there, convection over here, radiation over here. So heat flow across a room is uh, convection. What's happening is the air in one part of a room is getting warmer, usually, and it's moving to another part of a room and then making that part warmer. So that's the main way that heat goes across a room. Um, heat going through a wall, the main way that heat goes through a wall is through conduction. So the uh, material itself, the heat is transferred through the material from one side to another. Um, from a spaceship, there is no air or gas around a spaceship. It's in a vacuum, it's in space. So there's no conduction, there's nothing to conduct through, and there's no convection, pretty much. So the, um, the, a spaceship loses its heat through radiation. Um, inside a kettle, you have water, and the water takes heat from the hot bottom and moves around, and that's uh, convection. This time it's water doing the convecting rather than air, but it's still convection. Um, how about in your clothes? Now, in your clothes um, is uh, mostly conduction. There is, uh, your clothes keep you warm, um, and the main way they do this actually is trapping air inside the material. And in fact, there is some convection, but what the clothes are basically doing is stopping, is, is holding the heat um, by not letting it conduct. Mostly, mostly. A lot of these are actually not, not completely um, simple. But from a fire um, is... You can feel the heat of the fire, and that's because it's radiating. And also on your flat roof, when there's no clouds at nighttime, heat is radiating up into space. Uh, so these are ways, most of these, um, we're not in a spaceship, but most of these affect how heat is lost in a building. So if we're going to have a low energy building, then we want to try to not lose heat. So all the places that lose heat, we want to reduce that heat loss. So how do you do that then? How do you stop? How do you stop the flow of heat? Uh, well, there's a very simple answer. And the answer is, you can't. Um, you will lose heat. Heat will be lost. And you can slow it down 
but you can't stop it from being lost. If you have a warm house in the winter and it's cold outside, eventually the house will get cold. And if you have a cool house in the summer and it's hot outside, eventually the house will get hot. Uh, there's nothing really you can do about that. Um, which way does it move? It moves, the heat moves from hot to cold. Always. And this is, um, th so this is the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, we talked about the first law before. This is the second law. Um, basically stated, heat goes from hot to cold. Um, the second law also talks about entropy. Um, and entropy only increases. And I, I think of entropy as like, it's like messiness. If you have a messy room, then um, your room doesn't suddenly become tidy. Your room gradually becomes more and more messy until you go and tidy up. So um, that's basically entropy. Your, your room doesn't suddenly become tidy without you doing anything, but it does become messy. And that's, that's basically entropy. That's how the universe, unfortunately, the universe works this way. Um, heat goes from where it's hot to where it's cold. And things get more messy. Um, this was first, um, I mentioned Nicolas Sadi Carnot, uh, a Frenchman, who, who came up with the first law of thermodynamics, came up with the idea behind it. Um, it's usually accredited to a, a German, um, Rudolf Clausius, um, who, this was after the first law. So when, when uh, Sadi Carnot came up with the idea, there was no first law of thermodynamics. Um, but so these, these two people, we can, we can um, credit it. So um, we can't stop heat, uh, however good our walls are. We can't stop heat from, from being lost from the hot side to the cold side, but we can slow it down. And there are three things that affect how much heat we lose through a wall. Uh, you can probably just guess what these things are. Um, one of them is the temperature difference. So Ti, I'm using I for internal or inside, and E is for external. So the difference between the inside heat and the outside heat. If there's a bigger difference, you'll lose more heat. Um, so if it's minus 10 outside, you're going to lose more heat than if it's freezing outside. Or if it's, so if it's the same temperature, you don't lose any heat. Um, and if it's hotter outside, then you do, you gain heat. So it depends on the difference in the two temperatures. Um, it also depends on the area of the wall. So if you have a bigger wall, it's going to lose more heat. Um, and it also depends on the thickness of the wall. So if the wall is thicker, you lose less heat. Um, and these are all, this is all makes sense. We can, we can understand this. And we can also put this into an equation. So we can, we can um, put this into what's known as Fourier's law. This is another Frenchman, Fourier. Uh, a mathematician and a physicist. Um, Q dash is in watts. So we're talking about heat, heat moving. So we measure this in watts. Um, units of area are in square meters. And the units of, so what are the units of K then? Um, so it's a constant. The other thing, of course, is the, um, the other thing, the fourth thing that affects heat loss is what the material is. So depending on what you have, what your wall is made from, the heat will be lost more quickly or more slowly. Um, and we'll look at a few of, of the things that we could use to make a wall in a moment. Um, but let's just first of all look at the thermal conductivity. Um, and the Netsu Dendoritu. And as we can see, this is the equation. So Q dash, the, the heat flow, is this constant, K, times the area, times the difference in temperature, divided by the thickness of the wall. Um, we can shuffle this equation around to get K. 
and then if we put the units in, uh, we get watts times meters divided by square meters times Kelvin. Uh, and we can just uh, move one of the, um, cross out one of the, the meters, and we get watts per meter Kelvin. So this is the units of K. This is the units of thermal conductivity. Um, we can then, just to check, um, we can put this back in. So um, Q dash is K times A times delta T divided by D. If we put all these units in, uh, and then we cross out these, we can cross out these, and we can cross out these, and we get watts equals watts. So we've got the right, we've got the right units. Um, so K, this is this is uh, thermal conductivity then, um, and higher higher thermal conductivity means you lose more heat, and lower thermal conductivity you lose less heat. Um, so just have a look at these. Um, here are some um, materials that we might have around us or around our house. Um, which one of these do you think has the highest K, the highest thermal conductivity, which is going to transfer the most heat? And which has the lowest, which do you think will transfer the least heat? Uh, just uh, off you go. Go away and think about that for a moment. And um, let's look at the answers when you come back. Thermal conductivity. Here's, here are some thermal conductivities of some materials then. Um, polyurethane foam has um, a very low conductivity. Aluminium has a very high conductivity. Um, air is a very good conductor. Most of ins insulators. So what we need to make a house warm is we need what's called insulation. Um, and insulators slow down the heat. And most insulators have air in them, the same as our clothes. If you have warm clothes, if you have a down jacket, the down jacket is working not because of the down, but because the down is trapping air and the air doesn't conduct heat. It's very bad at conducting. It's very good at insulating. Um, so we can see these, we can look at the, like the comparison that air, um, some insulators are better than air. Um, most of them are a little bit worse than air. Um, wood is um, about five times worse than air. Um, some of the good, the the very, very high grade insulators will be about 10 times better than wood. Um, concrete is usually about 10 times worse than wood. Um, glass is also worse than wood. Um, aluminium is about 20,000 times worse than air. So aluminium is a very bad insulator and a very good conductor. Uh, so uh, what we have then when we're trying to, if we're trying to make a warm house, um, we need to think about what's called a thermal envelope. So we need to put, we need to wrap our house to keep it warm. So we keep warm house inside and cold outside. And the we should be able to draw a line around the warm part of the house. That's known as the thermal envelope. And this is um this is what keeps our house warm. So let's um let's make a house. Let's make a house. We're going to let's make it easy. Let's make the house um five meters by five meters by five meters. So it's going to be like a cube, like a dice. Make a nice flat roof. Um, let's just not worry about windows or doors for now. Um, uh, it's, not, it's not going to be a very practical house. And uh, let's have the house floating in air. Just somehow it's not touching the ground, so we don't have to worry about the ground. So our house looks um, something like this. We've got a, a cubic house. And let's try and make the house warm. And let's assume it's going to be zero. It's freezing outside. We want to keep the house 20 degrees inside. Uh, so how do we keep it warm? Well, we need to wrap it in um, 
in insulation. So whatever the, the wall is made of, we're going to lose heat through the wall, depending on how thick the wall is, depending on the material it's made from. And um, we then need to replace the heat that we lose with some kind of heating, whatever it may be. Um, just to make um, make it simple for insulation, so in with insulation we often talk about U value, and the U value is for a given thickness of insulation. So when you're choosing an insulator, you know how thick your wall is. You may have a hundred millimeters of wall, so you want a hundred millimeters of insulation. So that how much is that insulator going to work? Um, and this is um, now the heat loss is, is just the U value, so we don't need to worry about K, we can just use U, and times the area, times the difference in temperature. Uh, so let's use um, glass wool, fiberglass. It's not the best insulator. Um, it's not the most environmentally friendly insulator. Uh, but it's a pretty good insulator and it's pretty cheap and pretty easy to find. So let's just use this as our um, as our um, as our insulation for this house we're going to make. And its uh, K value is 0 0.04. So if we've got 100 millimeters, that's 0.1 meters. So our U value is 0 0.4. This is 0 0.4 watts per square meter per Kelvin. Um, so we can calculate for our house um, the area. So we need to know, we've got the U value, the heat loss is U times A times delta T. Um, the U value is 0.4. Delta T is going to be 20. So it's 20 degrees inside, it's freezing outside. Um, and the area. So let's see how much heating we need. So with the heating we need, we need we need to add the heating, the same amount of heating that we lose, we need to put back in. So if we're trying to find a heater, we want to keep our house warm, what kind of heater do we need? And um, let's see then. So uh, we know the area is five times five times six. So there are six sides, six, um, the roof and the uh, roof and the floor and four walls that means six sides they're all five by five so we've got 150 square meters of surface area um, that's what the Q value is so it's 1.2 kilowatts 1200 watts 1 1.2 kilowatts um, so Next, um, I have a little problem for you. Next, I'd like you to try and work out uh, for these houses. You may not want to have a house that's a cube. You may want to have um, a flat, a single story house. You may want to have like an L-shaped house. Uh, so, have a look at these houses then. And I'd like you to just calculate how much heat these are going to lose. Um, and just a uh, just a couple of hints for doing calculations. Um, first hint is to use lots of paper. Don't use one of these. I usually have um, lots of just old scraps of paper that I've been um, writing on, and um, there's something on the back, but it doesn't matter. But use use a lot. Don't don't um, don't worry about paper trying to save the planet and uh, also it's often a good idea when you're calculating something to start by drawing a picture if you draw a picture it helps you to work out what's happening um, another thing when you're doing calculations write every write every step of the calculation so don't don't jump don't skip things um, and if you make a mistake don't use an eraser, just cross out the mistake and write it again. Um, often you were right the first time. So when you think you've made a mistake, in fact, you haven't made a mistake, you got the right answer. And when you're trying to look back at what you've done, um, 
it's it's helpful if you cross out so you can see what you've done. If you use an eraser, you no longer can see what you've done. Um, the next piece of advice is to check it. So after you've done your calculations, uh, go back and check you've done things properly. Um, then check it again. And then if possible, and if it's important, get someone else to check it. Because often if you've made a mistake, you can't see your own mistake. Other people can. Uh, so here's my advice for you when you're doing calculations in general. Of course, sometimes in this class, you've got to do some calculations. Um, when you're doing calculations in other classes or when you're building your own house, then uh, I suggest you follow these follow these hints. So um, what were the... Um, off you go and work out. So what, what are these... Um, how much heating will these houses use? Um, off you go and work it out. Next, I'd like to look at form factor. Now, um, form factor is a measure of the surface area of a house over the floor area. So the floor area with a building, um, the useful part of a building is the floor. So usually if you have a bigger house, there's more floor area and we use the floor. Um, the surface area is where the heat is lost. So if you have more surface area, you lose more heat. So as far as thermodynamics are concerned, as far as heat is concerned, the heat doesn't care about your floor area. It just worries about how much surface area there is by which it can escape. Um, but if you live in a house, you're interested in the floor area. You can use the floor for walking around, putting furniture on. Um, that's the useful part of the house for you. So we can work this out. So for our house that was five meters cube, um, the surface area we just calculated already is 150, 150 square meters. The floor area, uh, if it's five meters, there's probably two stories. So there's a downstairs, upstairs. Um, each of these is about 25 square meters. So the total floor area is 50 square meters. The form factor is the ratio of these, uh, which is three. Um, we're dealing with a very simple idealized house. Um, in a real house, of course, these calculations are more are more tricky, um, and we don't get um, we won't get quite this number. How, so we've looked at two other kinds of it. We looked at the um, the one story house the um, two-story house, the five meter square has got a form factor of three. Um, if we go to a five meter by 10 meter one-story house, the form factor has gone up. Um, and if we look at an L-shaped one-story house, the form factor has gone up more. Um, next, I'd like you to look at another three uh, buildings. These are these. All of these. Um, we now have bigger buildings. Uh, so there's a two-story house with um, two two homes. This is twice the twice the floor area. If we're putting maybe one person in a twenty-five square meter house, fifty square meters for two people. Um, anyway, this is so the the um, there's two homes. In the, the top one, the bottom one has um, five homes in a terrace. Uh, the one on the right is like an apartment block, four stories, uh, with uh, eight homes in it. Um, so, how about the form factors for these then? The so just to put everything together then the um, the one story L shaped house. Uh, is the worst one, and the best one is the block. Um, so as we get, as we as we change the shape, and generally as we get more, if we build a bigger building, then the form factor gets better. And what this means is that we're losing less heat for the surface area. Um, and this also means so if we have a if we have a higher form factor 
if we have a higher surface area then we need more insulation to keep if we if we try if we have a target if we have a low energy target for our building then a higher form factor means the insulation needs to be thicker um, there's also more walls so you need to um, build more walls there are often more edges more um, more corners um, and all of this will cost more money and it will also take more time to build um, so if we can have a lower form factor this is better um, either we're going to get a uh, less heat loss or we're going to get it or and we're going to get a cheaper building um, and we can see for for a given energy a given heat load for a building for a given amount of heating um, as the form factor goes up the thickness of our walls also increases so we want um so we don't want to uh, do this really. So let's look at some let's have a look at some buildings. Um what about these buildings? Do you think these are high form factor or low form factor? Um the building on the left is a building in London, not not the one at the back, not the one at the front. Uh, the top right is the Sagrada de Familia. Um, the bottom right is an apartment block somewhere. Uh, how do you think these do? I think probably the one on the left. The one on the left looks like it has quite a quite a low form factor. It's a very um, it's a kind of curvy, curvy shape. Uh, Sagria de Familia, I, I think, was not built as a low energy building. Uh, it has an, a very very large surface area. Uh, and the building, the apartment at the bottom looks very nice, but it also looks like it, it has quite a high surface area. Um, those were all real buildings. These are the building on the left and the one in the middle are both real buildings. The one on the right is an imaginary building. Uh, what do we think about these form factors? Then not. They don't look very good, do they? They look like a, they have a very large surface area and a, for a, a fairly small floor area. How about these ones then? The uh, top left, I think, is in England. Um, the other three, I think, are in Japan. Uh, the bottom left is a dome. The dome shapes are very, if you work out the surface area the uh, domes are very good but have a very low surface area um, a very good form factor they can be tricky to make uh, the top left is a, a low energy terrace in um, in the UK um, it's a very it's a very clean um, for thermally it's a very clean shape um, the top right on the bottom right looks similar um, the balconies on the top right are likely to increase the um, surface area the building on the bottom right, that's some um, that's that's my house you see and the um, the t the there is a kind of balcony on it but the balcony is actually a separate structure so it doesn't increase the heat loss uh, the building on the top right I think the balconies are part of the structure of the main building so they all increase the surface area of the building um, so as we get um, as we get larger or as we get smaller it starts to get very very high very difficult to have a low form factor as you have a bigger building it gets much easier to have a low form factor this is other things being equal so if you're building small buildings um, you may be able to build a low energy building if it's a small building but if you're looking per per floor area um, it gets very difficult to make a low energy building for the amount of floor area so um, here's a um, another thing to think about is um, we can see in this picture here we can see um, a lobster and a person 
and let's just compare the lobster and the person for a moment. And we know um, humans and lobsters. We know that humans are warm-blooded and we have a skeleton on the inside. So our bones are on the inside and they're surrounded by skin and um, the outside. Uh, lobsters, on the other hand, are cold-blooded and they have their skeleton on the outside. So we should probably have the insulation outside the structure. So just to, to conclude, uh, for the basic design of our building, um, form factor is important. So if we have a good form factor, if we try and keep the surface area down, then it will make it easier and our house will be a low energy house. It'll be easier to be low energy. Uh, and also we should probably put the insulation on the outside of our building. That's all.